So the Sun Belt appears to be expanding after, you know, all the mess that went on with the AAC, which, by the way, on Thursday it was officially announced the AAC is welcoming in those six schools from Conference USA. And now the next move is the Sun Belt looks like they are going to extend an invitation to Southern Miss, and Marshall appears to be following them. Multiple reports stating this, that that'll be the next thing on the board, and it, it'll probably happen next week, week after, sometime around there. The next big puzzle piece appears to not be an FBS team, but James Madison. So JMU, an FCS school, looking to come up to the FBS. It looks like the Sun Belt might be involved in that, or the remaining Conference USA teams, which if Sun, if the Sun Belt takes Southern Miss and Marshall, that would bump them up to 12, and that would leave, let's see, da, 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 that would leave actually six Conference USA teams. Conference USA would be looking to bump up to 10 schools at that point, and James Madison would be one of them that they are looking at bringing in. This is, all of these puzzle pieces are so interesting to me. I don't know how this stuff is going to actually fly, but I have figured out that these ESPN deals, all of these contracts, all these uh, G5 contracts are going to be back up for renegotiation. And when that happens, ESPN is going to grab basically every G5 conference, and they are going to toss them on ESPN+. And that is going to be basically the only way that you can get them. So basically, anybody that is a fan of a G5 school is going to have to pay the $5.99 or $6.99 or whatever it is to ESPN for ESPN Plus in order to watch their teams. And that is not shocking to me, but as far as business goes, maybe a really, really good idea. You kind of feel the same? Well, yeah, it doesn't bother me because here's the thing. what Here's the trade-off that you're going to get. If your team is exciting, and your team is good, and they're having a special season, you're not going to have to pay that. You're going to get prime time football on Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays. Yes. Yes. And so that's what's going to happen. And if you told me that you're, you know, MTSU, and and everybody has to stream all your games, but the one year that you're special, you get three prime time ESPN games, on a weeknight where you have television basically to yourself, it, that would be you would you can't buy that kind of uh, publicity. Yeah. You just can't. That's the best deal in town. Also, Pete Thamel reporting out that you we keep talking about the American uh, TV deal is going to get cut in half basically with losing those teams. Uh, reportedly, no, it's not changing at all. ESPN is going to stand by what they've got, and they they think that that they're just as valuable, and they they want the product. Yeah, no, I did that. I did see that. So, Very so if surprising. that's the case, now, now these teams going to the American are absolutely getting a huge payday because they're going from like three million dollar a year TV deals to like seven. And well, that's a big deal. Uh, so, so here's here's the difference: the ones that are just now being brought in from Conference USA are only going to get half the money. That's right. They're not going to get all of it, but yeah. it's still a big number compared to what they are getting. Yes, yes, because they're only making about five hundred grand off of their media rights deal currently. Those six schools will be making half of what one school in the AAC is making right now. So yeah, seven but, million okay, a year. So, so right so, now the AAC is getting seven, so they're going to get three and a half. That's how I got that number. Yeah, they're going to get three and a half instead of five hundred k. That's a huge deal. Yes, yes, it is. So it's it's definitely a step up for them. You know, the more I look at it, the more I'm like, ah, this it kind of. It does water down the AAC product a little bit, but there is potential there for some of those teams to grow and for some really, really exciting matchups. I mean, we already had one. Uh, UTSA at Memphis was a hell of a ball game. So it, more matchups like that I am excited about. We get Memphis UAB again. Uh, SMU and Rice should be you know somewhat entertaining just because of the uh, the, the Texas ties and all that. But, uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited about this. I, I, think, uh, I think we're moving in the right direction. You know, again... If I were the boss, if I handled all of it, college football czar, I would take all of these G5 schools, put them all together, and work out my TV contract that way so that I could you know, schedule the way that I want to across the board, make more regional rivalries, all that good stuff. But if we're going to do it this way, uh, cheers to it. I'm, I'm good with that. So, but like I said, Gary, we talked about this. That, that, that sounds good for easy sake and all this other bullshit, but if you're Memphis or you're, you're Tulsa, you're, you're these other schools that have been in the American. 
You know that you're better than these other teams. You know that you're worth a lot more than these other teams. Why would you agree to that? I agreed. I, I, I mean, I'm with all you 100%. Right. When, just, when you put everybody in a big pot like that, all you do is placate to the median, which means you're overpaying the bullshit teams that don't deserve anything, all right? And you're grossly underpaying those who are outperforming, you know, what you should be giving them. And, and so that's why you just can't do that. you you got to have separation because then you're rewarding conferences, you're rewarding certain teams that are putting the money into the program and getting results. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do not disagree with you at all. The separation is necessary in, in a lot of these cases. Everybody has a worth, and the ones that rise up eventually get picked off by bigger conferences, and the ones that don't obviously get relegated down and and while that does stink for those schools, it it's you you reap what you sow. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE, at Chris B G Anini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.